afternoon, we're here with Nish Rostogi of New Rhine Healthcare Investors. And Nish, you've, uh, you've had a career, it's an, an evolving career in, on the venture side of the life sciences. So tell us a little bit about how you got here. Sure, Joe. Thanks for having me. Appreciate the time. Um, love what, what you're doing with Lab Notes and, and getting the word out on the Philly ecosystem. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about myself. Uh, as you mentioned, I've been a venture investor in life sciences now for a little over five years. Uh, I started my career in Boston, uh, graduated from Dartmouth and then moved to Boston, uh, which as, as everyone knows is, is sort of a hub for biotech and, and life sciences investing. I um, actually started at Fidelity Investments uh, in 2012 um, in their internal consulting group and strategy group at a time when Fidelity was looking at ways of uh, incorporating healthcare into their business models. Um, and after spending kind of three formative years at Fidelity, I moved right into the investment side with an early stage venture philanthropy fund called Broadview Ventures um, as the first associate on their team. And Broadview was investing seed series A rounds um, early in and backing early stage medical device and biotech companies in the area of cardiovascular and neurovascular disease. And I had a fantastic opportunity there, not only to learn how life sciences venture worked, but also to roll up my sleeves and, and work with some fantastic scientists and researchers and founders and CEOs uh, and help them um, grow and, and translate their technologies uh, from research uh, to patients. Uh, so we funded a lot of first in human trials. We did a lot of phase one uh, translational research funding at Broadview and it was a great learning opportunity for me. Um, I'm originally from the Philadelphia area. So even though I was in Boston, um, I always wanted to get back here. And uh, after going to business school and, and having some stints in New York and Washington DC at other healthcare investment firms, uh, I had an opportunity to join New Ryan in 2018 and help uh, the New Ryan team build out its office in Philly. Well, uh, what a great opportunity. And so you're VP of investments, but uh, you have some exciting other players on the team. And we got a chance to talk a little bit about that and, and how that distinguishes New Ryan. So I wonder if we can take a second to talk about that. Yeah, and New Ryan is really the brainchild of uh, my, my founding partners. Um, so our founding partner, Greg Parikh, uh, used to run global M&A for Novartis. Um, so he was head of all M&A activity uh, at Novartis for a number of years uh, in the mid 2000s. Uh, and before that was the head of European healthcare investment banking at Deutsche Bank. Uh, so Greg has really a tremendous amount of deal experience um, in life sciences and, and pharmaceutical industry. Um, he founded New Rhine in 2011, um, shortly after he had left Novartis and then had a, a stint as the CEO of a Belgian uh, oncology diagnostics company as well. Um, and he founded Neurine on this, uh, this theory that innovation drives greater risk adjusted returns um, than invention. And as you can imagine, given his experience, Greg had, had started to see a number of different patterns of, of what makes a successful medical product. Um, and he had this, this concept of that there was a lot of really great science sitting on the shelves uh, that needed to be polished and, and that drugs were really developed uh, and, rather than discovered. And um, you could take a, you could repurpose existing science and that would reduce the cost of developing that medicine um, and potentially um, get a medicine to patients quicker uh, because you're leveraging science that already exists. So he started in 2011, I started New Ryan in 2011, um, invested three times under that philosophy from 2011 to 2016, had three exits, um, and on the heels of his third exit, decided to raise a, a more standard institutional fund. He was investing on a deal-by-deal -deal basis before 2016, and then in 2016, on the heels of his last uh, exit, Chase Pharmaceuticals, um, his investors said, why don't you start a, a more traditional private equity fund? So Greg has a phenomenal background uh, in finance and deal-making. In 2016, he brought two other partners into New Rhine. Um, Subhanu Saxena is a partner that, that sits in London. Subhanu used to be the, the global CEO of CIPLA, which is a large Indian generic medicines company. And before that, he used to run the commercial arm for Novartis in the UK and Ireland. Um, so has fantastic experience um, you know, getting drugs to patients and medicines to patients, commercializing products. He's responsible uh, for a lot of the, the major blockbuster launches that Novartis had. In, in the early 2000s and, and late 90s, um, drugs that are still blockbuster drugs for Novartis today. 
Um, and so Subhanu joined as the second partner. And then our third partner is really the reason that we decided to open up shop in Philadelphia. And that was in 2018 when Greg and Subhanu recruited uh, Dr. Ivan Gurgle into New Ryan. Um, Ivan is originally from the King of Prussia area. He has 25 plus years in the pharmaceutical industry as a drug developer uh, and the head of R&D at various pharmaceutical organizations. Uh, most recently, he was the head of R&D at Nectar um, and head of R&D at um, Endo Pharmaceuticals. Um, and he has developed uh, more than 14 drugs to his name. Uh, so a very pragmatic scientist and, and drug developer. And so the three of them come at, come at um, the investment cycle and they come at the, the problem or, or the challenge of developing medicines from three different angles, uh, deal-making, commercialization, and R&D. And it's really the, the triumvirate um, that makes New Run a special place to work and, and um, you know, a great, talented organization uh, for investments. So that's a terrific overview. And I think this is an important place to, to just take a minute to say, given your philosophy, how are companies that are working with science that uh, that really the next step is this development phase? So they need investment and they need assistance in development. How do they connect up with you? What what's the best way? How do you get to them? How do they get to you? Sure. Um, so we really describe ourselves as an incubator uh, for biotech companies, and it's because my three partners have such tremendous amount of experience in the industry. They know what makes uh, a company appealing to the ultimate purchaser, which is in, in a lot of cases, uh, a large pharmaceutical company that has a resource to bring your product to patients and, and get it commercialized. So what we look for um, is our companies that are interested in working with us and see the value and the experience that my partners bring um, and are looking um, kind of in that, I would say late clinical trial stage um, and, and need help and um, are, are thinking about how to run their phase two study or their next clinical study, whether it's phase two or phase three, um, how to start thinking about uh, commercializing their product, how to position it with payers, um, what is the target patient population that they're going after, what is a specific unmet medical need that they're going after. And the best way to reach out to us really is through our website. Um, I think there's a, you know, a, a lengthy description of our investment criteria on the website. Uh, typically we're putting anywhere between five to $15 million of equity into a deal at, at a given time. Um, and we have certain criteria about uh, where the company is in their stage of development. So most often we're looking for companies that have some clinical data um, or an existing data package um, with an existing asset. Like I mentioned, we're really interested in repurposed assets. Um, so where there's existing science or existing clinical data that supports the hypothesis that's helpful. Um, some kind of regulatory interaction with the FDA is always helpful. So whether it's you know post IND and, and uh, you've met with the company, uh, we've met with the agency and, and are thinking about your next clinical trial design, that's helpful. Um, and really, you know, in that sweet spot of of late stage clinical development is, is where we where we come in. And we do we do you know predominantly biopharma, um, but we're also looking opportunistically at medical devices as well. So you mentioned uh, three exits. Uh, we talked previously about a, a couple of, of new initiatives that you have underway and a, and a couple that are in the pipeline. Historically, how have you sourced these opportunities? Yeah, so it's really a, a combination of inbound and outbound um, and very network driven. So when we started the office in Philadelphia in 2018, uh, part of my responsibility was just to get the word out of who New Ryan is. We were um, a new entity in the United States. Uh, so I'd say the first year, we did a lot of outbound marketing, a lot of outbound networking. Uh, I was going to conferences. Ivan and Greg and Subhanu were going to conferences and really positioning ourselves as the go-to investor for repurposed assets. Uh, and in the industry, that, those are called 505B2 assets. Um, that's what the FDA regulatory pathway is for a repurposed drug. Um, so in that first year, um, you know, we had the bio conference in Philadelphia in 2019. That was a great coming out party for us. Um, and, and, you know, be, being in the industry now for a little bit more than five years, I, I started to see which conferences are the most high yield. So it was getting the word out in year one. Um, that helps uh, getting the word out and, and having leveraging relationships with investment banks, with other investors and life sciences investors, both in Philly and, and in Boston and out, outside. Um, but year one was a lot of outbound. And then year two, you sort of sit back and, and let and reap the benefits 
of your efforts in year one. And now uh, a tremendous amount of our pipeline comes inbound because people know that New Rhine looks for these particular types of assets. Um, my partners, again, bring a, an incredible network of industry executives. We started an, an executives and residents program um, that also taps into you know, the pharmaceutical corridors. And so we get a lot of inbound through my partner's network um, and through our external outreach. So as you have now established New Rhine as, as an investor player in the Philadelphia market, what's your assessment of, of the venture and private equity market in Philadelphia? How, how are you seeing it? How are you seeing it evolve and change? Love to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah, it's been very encouraging, I would say. Um, you know, when I moved here from Boston, I was a little bit skeptical. My wife is a physician in Philadelphia and, and you know, our parents and families are, are both near here. So we always wanted to move back. But uh, a lot of people were telling us that why would we ever move from Boston? It seems to be the mecca of, for life sciences. Um, and I've been very encouraged in, in Philadelphia. You know, there's a strong community here of life sciences talent and investment talent and, and investment professionals. Um, but it's a little bit um, hidden and, and less in your face than it is in Boston. Um, and I think there's a reason, there's a, a bit of a branding reason why, why Philadelphia is underappreciated as uh, a life sciences hub um, because we're not necessarily branded yet in that way. Um, but over the course of two years, uh, I've had an opportunity to meet with all of the, the life sciences investors here in Philly, whether it's BioAdvance or Ben Franklin Tech Partners who actually did it, our first deal with um, Osage, Rittenhouse Ventures, um, 1315 Capital. You know, there's a, a tremendous amount of investment activity happening in the, in the region. Um, it's, you, you sort of have to seek it out for yourself. Uh, and I think it's in, in the early days, uh, but we have success stories now. Um, and, you know, I, I just mentioned to you before we started recording this, that in 2019, $2.5 billion of venture and private financings went into the Philadelphia region. And so that puts us as a city in the top 10 of startup ecosystems in the United States. And I think we're, again, we're still in the early days. Um, there's a lot of activity happening in the universities, the tech transfer offices, um, and I've, I've been encouraged. And I think there's only um, positive growth to go from here as some of these startups continue to be successful and these investors continue to be successful. Well, Nish, we're really excited that you and New Ryan are here in Philadelphia, that you're involved in building the brand for Philadelphia. And like you, top 10 is good, but uh, top three is even better and, and top of the heap is best. So we look forward to watching your growth and success and to growing the Philadelphia cluster with you. Thanks very much for being with us and giving us a window into what you're doing and, and the difference you're making in our Philadelphia cluster here. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the time. And I'd encourage you know, anyone who's seeing this to reach out to New Ryan through our website. Um, we're still actively looking at deals and, and love to get on the phone with um, really uh, incredible scientists and researchers and entrepreneurs. So look forward to being here and, and continuing to be here in Philadelphia.